graduates. So I would, I, I'm not the right person to ask because I would have to think that all my graduates are wonderful. They're magnificent. They do great. They pass the trainer's training. They go by the trainer's training. They pass it. They do well. Anyone who does that is going to be a magnificent trainer. Uh, here's an example, uh, a, a, a guy from Amsterdam named uh, Guido Dick. He's, uh, he's, he's one, of the, our, one of our trainers. He was in a corporate training situation in Amsterdam, in Holland, and he was, I think, uh, lower third of the uh, ranking every time. Right. He came and took the trainer's training. He went back home. He was a corporate trainer, lower third of rank. In other words, if, he, if there were 10 trainers, he was generally around number six or seven or eight. And, um, and um, he took the trainer's training, three weeks, two and a half weeks, trainer's training, came, ba came back. Every single training he did after that was ranked number one. He was number one in the corporate arena from then on. He then decided to go out and form his own company, which is probably a good thing to do. And he's doing very well at that. So... Our, so first, I'm just talking about our trainers now. I'm not talking about our master. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just talking about our trainers. So the trainers themselves have very, very excellent present, presenting skills. And, I, and I'm proud of our presenting skills. I'm proud of how we train people, and I'm proud of the results of the people we put out. We have a lot of people who don't become NLP trainers. I mean, they're, they become NLP trainers. They're certified, but they don't go out and do NLP trainings. They go out and do corporate trainings. Some people go out and do politics. <laughs> Some, <laughs> they do. Some people go out and do politics. Some people go out and do corporate trainings. Some people go out and do their own business trainings. So, so I'm real proud of our people. I think our people are the best, and I would think that. I'd have to think that. But the fact is, our trainer's training is different from any other trainer's training. And I can tell you that because we actually install behaviors. We do an installation process, which is unique in the field, and we install those behaviors about 30. And you, the thing is, you can't do 30 things consciously. You can do maybe five or seven things consciously. But you can't do 30 things consciously, so we have to relegate most of those to the unconscious mind. We use um, NLP techniques. We use hypnosis techniques. We use timeline therapy to assist people. But we do install the behaviors so that you're the best trainer you can possibly be. For who you are, we install the techniques, and, and, and you end up being the best trainer you can possibly be. And if you find it, one of our trainers somewhere in the world, ask, ask the trainer. Ask the trainer, how did the trainer's training go? And you'll find out that they found it was the best thing they ever did. Of course. Yep. Now, on the other side, what do you think makes some people fail in the NLP career? You know, one of the things about starting in a new business is that a lot of times your friends are going to tell you you're crazy. Your friends are going to say, you're nuts. What, wait, what makes you think you can succeed in a business? And this is the plight of the small businessman. This is the plight of the person who's opening his own business, who's starting off new, who's starting off fresh. And the problem is that most people aren't willing to spend the time to succeed. I would have to say many people find it tough going and they quit too early. One of the things we noticed is that longevity in this field, longevity really gets you the success that you're looking for. So. It's a matter of doing the same thing year after year. It's a matter of having similar... Our seminar schedule has been similar for 30 years. We do our trainings in Australia in May, June. Yeah, and September, October. And then in September, September and October. October. November, yes. And we do our trainings in the United States in March, and then July, August, September. Yeah. So we do that every year. So we've been doing that for 30 years. People get used to the schedule. So having the same schedule gets you uh, people planning ahead. And when people plan ahead, then they have more time to do it. The problem is that most people run into a little glitch, glitch, a little hiccup, a little bump in the road, and they go, oh, this is too tough. I can't do it. So, so the first thing I would say is stay on the path. Keep doing the same thing for year after year. And that will solve a lot of marketing problems because you'll get more and more well-known. But, but you're going to need to have something that, as I mentioned in an earlier um, edition, as I mentioned earlier in this series, you need to have something you hang your hat on. You need to have something you're known for. So in the United States, I'm known for timeline therapy. 
Being Australia too. In Australia, I'm known for timeline therapy. Yeah. Dave Shepard hung his hat on timeline therapy, so he's known for that. So you can hang your hat on something, but you need to hang your hat on something. <laughs> yes. Because if you're if you're a generalist, it doesn't it doesn't position you as well as if you have some specific some specific positive thing that you're known for. And I would say that's another thing. So the advice, my advice to the young business person is to really research NLP and his own feelings or her own feelings. How do you feel about this technique you're teaching? And if you really love it, develop it more. Make, hang your hat on that. Maybe you could do, maybe you could hang your hat on uh, values changes, values hierarchy, values coaching in a business context. If you liked values, but if you hated values, then that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be a good topic. So choose something that you can focus on that becomes your niche. And then drive, your, drive the wedge through that. Drive through that and go in that direction. That's what I would, that's what I would say. So Ted, what are your plans for the future? <laughs> plans for the future? I think this might sound like a broken record. <laughs> this might... <laughs> I think the most important thing for me to focus on now is transforming the planet. Oh, you said that before. I've said that before. <laughs> That's what I said. I'm going to sound like a broken record. I think the most important thing that I want to do right now is, is to focus on transforming the planet. Look. Look. <laughs> listen, listen, listen for a minute. Just a minute. One minute. Listen. Listen. The planet needs some help. I don't, I don't think you have to look around and notice that this place has got problems, this place has got problems, this place has got problems, that place. I don't think you have to, I don't think you have to sit there and go, gee, everything's fine. I think that the planet needs some help. At least the people on the planet need some help. So I think for me, the first thing to do is, and to continue to do, is to focus on f transforming the planet. As I've said before, Adriana and I both know we can't do it alone. It's not possible to do it alone. So since we can't do it alone, we want your help. That means that we need to train as many trainers of NLP as possible so that they can go out and teach these techniques so that people can become self-actualizing, they can become aware, they can restore their critical faculty, and they can have the kinds of things they want to be able to create in their lives. So I think the focus for us is to really focus on what it is, what it is that is, in terms of the planet, what it is we need to do to transform it. I think for the future for me, that's the thing we have to do. We have to make sure that NLP, timeline therapy, and hypnosis continue to be spread to more and more people. We're, we're, we're getting a groundswell now. NLP is, is written, it's been written about now in more articles. We see it in more articles. We see it in articles, uh, political articles, where we, where we didn't see it ever before. Or at least I haven't seen it ever before. And I'm reading political articles now, and I'm seeing uh, where the commentator says, oh, he used NLP in this thing and that thing. And, and, and I've, I've never seen that. So I think we're having more and more effect. We're having more and more effect. We're having more and more people who are aware of NLP and the fact that it is um, present. It's used by politicians. It's used by business people. It's used by, well, NLP practitioners and master practitioners. It's, it's used by a lot of people. But it's becoming more and more well-known. Some people don't like it. Some people don't like it, but the people that actually end up writing bad articles about it are the ones who are haven't taken it, and therefore they have no idea what. And it therefore is they have it. no idea what it is. It's just three yes. letters they want to drop into their thing because they know people are searching for it. They just want to get the search engine <laughs> optimized. Optimized up, <laughs> yeah. So, so what, what do I think is the future? I think the future is NLP, and I think NLP is right about to hit a crest, a big crest, where it's going to go boom. And more and more people are going to want it. So I think this is a perfect time to get into the get into the act. Excellent, Dad. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I want to thank you for being around for such a long time and for continuing to do this um, for many, 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 many years more to come. Absolutely. And um, I will see you back into the training room okay. tomorrow. Thank, thank you. you.